that took the time to come out here and be a part of this. I thank you for the love that's in your hearts that you come out here to stand up and pray for a fallen brother. I know that most of you are not what you call church people. I spent 30 years not having anything to do with anything to do with religion. But I made the mistake of daring God to show me he was real, and he did. Now, David, God bless him. I know Dave believed in God because Dave came to me and said, what would you think about starting a biker church out here on Sunday morning? At that point in time, I was working at uh, First Baptist downtown, and I had to be to work on Sunday. But I came back about a week later. I said, Dave, what would you think about Sunday afternoon? Dave said, no. He said, there's going to be people in there drinking, making fun of it. That would be offensive to God, and I'm not going to be part of anything that offends God. So I know Dave believes in God. And I know that everybody here, if you ride on these streets, you got to know there's a God. I mean, come on. <laughs> but anyhow, I, I, this is not meant to be a church service, but I do want to read a couple scriptures, and i got a couple brothers that are going to speak. And then we're going to open it up if anybody wants to come forward and pray. But let's start with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right, this morning I was looking up some scripture, you know, asking the Spirit to guide me what I should say. Psalm 124.8 says, The Lord made heaven and earth, and he is the one who sends us help. And Psalm 33, 5 says, For the word of the Lord holds true, and we can trust everything he does. He loves whatever is just and good. The unfailing love of the Lord fills the earth. But the Lord put it on my heart to read this little story. It's out of the book of Luke. It's about Jesus healing a paralytic. And I looked it up in Greek. Paralytic means someone... Well... It's hard to translate exactly. It's not paralytic. It means someone that's supine, that's unable to respond. And it says, on one of those days he was teaching, Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there, who had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was with him to heal. And behold, some men were bringing on a bed a man who was paralyzed, and they were seeking to bring him in and lay him before Jesus. But finding no way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and let him down with his bed through the tiles into the midst before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, he said, Man, your sins are forgiven you. And the scribes and Pharisees began to question, saying, Who is this that speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sin but God alone? And when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he, has, he answered them, Why do you question in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Rise and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, rise, pick up your bed, and go home. Now look that word rise up. In Greek, it means wake up. So right now, in the name of Jesus, we're saying, wake up, Dave. We need you. We miss you. And we have faith. We know God can heal you. Wake up. Now if God chooses, if God chooses to heal him, to put his hand upon him, it would give glory to his name. But realistically, this is going to be a process. Dave's going to go through a lot of, of rehabilitation and therapy. But with all of us here, all of you that love him like this, he's going to be, he's going to be okay. So I'm going to start praying. Uh, I want to say a short prayer for Dave and for Lisa. And then uh, Kenny Ziegler, he's the chaplain for the Vietnam Veterans Association. He's going to come up and speak, and then we're going to have Brother Flash speak a little bit. So please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we lift up this situation to you, Lord. We don't understand why you let things like this happen. But in your word, you tell us that your ways are not our ways, and your thoughts are not our thoughts, and that your ways and thoughts are higher above ours than the heavens are above the earth. We lift up Dave to you, Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus that you put your hand upon him, that you heal him, that you restore him fully. But if that's not your will, if you want him to go through a process of, of slow steps, we thank you for that as well, Lord. We thank you that you spared his life. 
And we thank you, Lord, for the knowledge that that could have been any one of us. I pray right now, Lord, that you touch the hearts of the people here to know that there's only one way to know that when our time comes, we can be with you. I just lift every person here up to you, Lord. I pray that you open their eyes and their ears to hear your word, to receive you as their Lord and their Savior, so that they can know that no matter what happens in this world, we're going to be riding on those streets of gold one day. I thank you and I praise you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Okay. I've been riding all my life. Different different bikes. My brother's been into Harleys. I've been into BMWs. Um, and other, much, a lot of other bikes. But one of the things that uh, that's happened for me is I've been delivered from the point of death on several occasions. And uh, in, a, in, a, in an earnest, I could say, and I just wanted just to share with you that uh, there's no greater hope when, it, when, it, when the chips are down when we're placing our, our, our trust in Christ. Um, I've had men die around me, and uh, it's humbling. But one of the things that I know that all things do have a purpose. It's in according to His will. And, and I thank God for having the opportunity to come down here and talk with you guys and, uh, and gals. My prayer is that day that the Lord would heal him and that we could be just a, a small testimony to the, uh, to the wonderful fact of what, what Christ has done 2,000 years ago to bring back unity to us as being rebels. I mean, uh, 42 years ago, I stole my dad's motorcycle and ran away to hippie con. Uh, and, uh, that's a long time ago, but in a lot of water under the bridge, but one thing I do know is even just being somewhat of a rebel myself, um, I know where I can flee, and I know where I can go. And that's where, and that's where we can stand today. That's where we will stand. I'll have a little bit of time to short prepare for myself, but just understand that I came down here and arranged for Port St. Lucie, and for for a good reason, for a good cause. It's every one of you, and for Dave. And uh, I thank Lord for this opportunity. Lord, just watch over us, watch over Dave. We do pray, Lord, for Your healing hand. And for each one of these folks that's here for this morning, just to show that, you know, just, they just want to show that they care. And I want to show that I care too, Lord. Just watch over these folk. Pray for their souls. With one simple prayer, Lord, here I am, Son. That's all it takes. Christ's name, Amen. You know, thank you all so much for being here today. This can be looked at as such a negative thing, but when you think back over the years, and you know, when we come together, this is not about religion, this is not about church, this is about a relationship. And coming from a soldier for Jesus, we point you in the right direction. Because we've seen it, we've been there, it's been revealed to us. We don't thump, we don't push, we don't pressure. But I myself know, and I remember the call from Dave one day when he also asked if we would set up a, a biker church here at Mickey's. And, I, and at first I thought, you know, this is, well, it's unique. And then I thought he was joking. And yeah, then he comes back and, and he asks again. And of course, he's opened up Mickey's to, to several of our off annuals and I think even one of our annuals. And we're thankful for that relationship that, that we do have with Dave and with Lisa. He's been a blessing in our life. And the Lord can use him in a mighty way. And you know what? He's even brought us here today. And when I think back over the past years, and you know, every time uh, the end of the year comes, I, I pull out the pocket Bible, and I'm loaded with funeral cards of services that we've done. And it's a time to reflect back into, into how many faces I've looked at in their final moments of life. I mean, I think of Rambo from, uh, from uh, uh, Days Gone By. I took the final walk with him. I look him in the face and just let him know, look for that hand. It's reaching down. It's trying to save you. The last word I heard out of his mouth was, you know, at any time, at any time, the next day he passed. You know, this is real. It's true. And just looking out at what was able to come together today, it would be possible to hold that church service here. 
But you know what? We'll leave that in the Lord's hands. If he brings it together, it's up to him. But right now, we have a burden on the heart, and that's for Dave. And, and I'm thankful that this is not a memorial service. This isn't a funeral. We can turn this to a time of praise because you know what? He is alive. Amen. And we will continue to echo the prayers. When when I was in, I was, as a matter of fact, I just got back from Colorado. We were out there at a, at a regional for us when the call came in. And to just know immediately prayers are going out from around this country. And, and it's not just a prayer. They're physically and they're spiritually setting day before the Lord, asking that, that He work in and through that situation. And, and that's just a prayer that we'll start off now. And, and for those that, that don't want to pray, you know what? We'll say you can tell a story, but we'll say it's a parable. It'll be an earthly story, but it'll have an eternal meaning. But uh, if you don't mind, let's just go to the Lord in prayer and let's call on some holy intervention. Father God, we come to you this day. And, and Father God, right now, I just ask forgiveness for anything that would hinder you from hearing, hearing the words of our heart. Don't hear our words, just hear the words of the heart. Father God, just to echo the prayers of, of what's been the last days. And Father God, that we're here and, and that we can continue to set this request before you. We just come to you with honor and praise. But we ask right now that you continue to work through the doctors, through the nurses, through the caregivers. Father God, through people that can minister to Dave, to Lisa, to this situation, that can continue to bring the support to Mickey's that, that funds the family. But Father God, right now, uh, just the pressure in Dave's head, we thank you that that has subsided, and you have that capability of turning the circuit breaker back on. If that breaker needs to be off for now, Father God, you healed him from within. You move mightily. But we ask that you not only reveal yourself, but that you prevail in everything that is said, is done, is felt, is thought. Father God, give him the, the restoration, and give him the time of reflection now that he needs. Father God, for Lisa, give her the comfort that she needs, give her the guidance. You have that capability of presenting yourself and to give the peace above all understanding. And we're going to trust that you will do that. And Father God, right now, physically and spiritually, once again, we release all matters and issues to you. And with respect to all faiths represented here today, we will leave it with you in Jesus' name. Amen. For anyone else that would like to come and just share a word of Dave, or if you want to pray, the microphone is open now. We have the states, Lakeworth and Pompano, that all of our prayers are with Dave and his family, and we look forward for the day to see him get back on that bush ride with us again. So God bless his family. Amen. I showed up here about a year and a half ago. And I pretty much know everybody in this crowd. And to come some, from somewhere that you've never seen so many people that can gather for one man. And we all come here to do the devil's deed. We all have fun here, however you want to put it, you know. Um, you know, they call us dirty bikers, or we don't care, or this or that. You know, I'd much rather be here than a church right now. I've been to church and I'm not real happy. But to see everybody here that has an individual thought about God and where they're gonna go or where they came from, to they show up here for one man, that's a wonderful thing. Because remember, none of us are getting out alive. None of us. Okay, I want everybody on the count of three, just scream out, wake up. Dave. One, two, three. Wake, Wake up, Dave! Dave! Jesus name. Well, if nobody else wants to come up, once again, I want to thank everybody who came out here. And there's one more scripture I want to share with you. It's on the last page of the Bible, Preacher Gold where our bikes don't ever need tires or oil or gas and we can ride till we get tired of riding if you can imagine that concept but in the book of revelations in the last chapter of the bible it talks about the streets it talks about the city it says then the angel showed me the river of the water of life brightest crystal flowing from the throne of god and of the lamb 
through the middle of the street of the city. And also on either side of the river, the tree of life, with its twelve kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be anything accursed, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and night will be no more. They will need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. As I said earlier, you know, that could be any one of us. And there's only one way that we can know that we're going to be up there riding as long as we want to ride. We'll be in the glory chapter of whatever patch we fly if we get right with God. If anybody wants to know, has any questions, wants to know anything more about it, talk to Flash or me or Brother Kenny. There's several of us. There's Calvary Chapel was here earlier this morning. They couldn't stay because they had prior commitments. But this outpouring of love, this support of one of our own, it blows my mind. And I thank God for it. I thank God for each and every one of you. I lift Lisa up for comfort, for strength. I lift up Chelsea and Tyler and Dave's sisters out in Oklahoma. And if you would, cry, bow your heads and pray with me one more time. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you put it in the hearts of all of us to come out here to show support for Lisa and the family. We thank you that you've touched all of our hearts to know there is a God. We wouldn't be here for a prayer service if we didn't know you were real. Lord, I lift Dave up. You could heal him in, in a blink of an eye. But for some reason, you're allowing this to happen. We don't understand what we can't understand until we walk with you. And one day we will understand because in your word, you tell us that. We love Dave and we love Lisa. And this community is awesome. I ask blessings and protection on every person here and all their families. And I thank you once again. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you all. God bless you and everyone. Sure. Sir. Let me mention something. I didn't take a chance. You know, some of you guys some of you guys know me, some of you guys don't. But like Tom, I came up here just two years ago. Lived in Miami all my life. Didn't know anybody up here. And Dave and all of you guys have really made me really easy to, to make friends with, you know? Everybody's been nice and open, and I've really enjoyed meeting all of you. I'm a strange bird. <laughs> I don't fit the stereotype, which, uh, you know, which is okay. And that's part of what I like about the group, is that everybody can be themselves. So I am who I am. And part of that is a choice I made a couple of years ago about a year ago, to be an optimist and have a positive outlook on things. Life is good. Death does suck. And life is good. There's so much that we can be optimistic about. So I really like that, you know, I do fit in to a really wide and diverse group of people from everywhere. Let's face it, we all come from somewhere. I happen to have been born in the U.S. traveling to Brazil. So that makes me Latin. But I'm Everybody's from somewhere. Dave accepted me and welcomed me in here, as did Lisa. And, you know, everybody that I've met here has been really friendly. I happen to hear an off chance remark from somebody that we all care for and who really needs the help. And this needs some help. Dave's not here. Dave's not here to do the stuff that Dave needs to do. But he has a huge wide diverse family of people who are here and people of people who are here and people of people of people isn't that what the brotherhood's all about so i'd like to suggest a pompadome like a year from now it's concrete big old fucking shell like hollywood dish <laughs> but at least put something across it and do something i think by the end of the day everybody here has enough connections to do whatever's needed to make this right. So, Lisa could use a little help with the Pompadome. If anybody knows anybody, if anybody can contribute, I'll put 10 bucks up right now. There she is. All right, thank you much. All right, thank you all. What do you guys like saying?